In this video, we're doing another vertical motion problem. And in this particular problem, we've been told that a coin is dropped from the roof of a 600 foot tall building with an initial velocity of negative eight feet per second. So remember that this negative value indicates that the coin is falling toward the ground. When you have a velocity that is positive in a vertical motion problem, it means that a coin or a ball or whatever you have is being thrown upward away from the ground. So negative value, it's falling toward the ground. When does it hit the ground and what is its velocity when it does? Well, with a problem like this one, where we're just dropping something off the top of a building, we use this formula here to model the position function. And it should look familiar, but slightly different to you. When you have a vertical motion problem where you're, for example, throwing a ball from the ground straight up, and it goes up, and then it hits its highest point, and then it comes back down and hits the ground again, when you're modeling the position of something like that, that goes up and then back down, you have this same position function, except all of the signs on these values are flipped. So you'll have a negative 1 half g t squared plus v sub 0 t plus y sub 0. But when you're just dropping something off the top of a building and the motion is only from the top straight down, you use this for the position function where the signs are opposite and we have a positive term, a negative term, and then a negative term. So if we want to plug the information we've been given into this formula to get the position function, we'll have y of t is equal to the 1 half stays g is the gravitational constant, and because we're dealing with feet per second, gravity is going to be 32. When you have meters per second, you're going to plug in 9.8 for the gravitational constant. Feet per second, you plug in 32. So we've got 32. t squared, t is the variable we're going to leave in, minus v sub 0. Well, v sub 0 is the initial velocity. Our initial velocity is negative 8. So we have a minus negative 8, which is going to be the same as plus 8 and then we have our t, and then y sub zero is the initial position, and the initial position of the coin is 600 feet off the ground, so we're gonna say minus a positive 600. Now when we simplify this here, we're gonna get y of t is equal to, 1 half times 32 is 16, so 16 t squared plus 8 t minus 600. Now let's pause for a second and think about what we're actually trying to accomplish here. If we draw a sketch of our building, and let's say our building looks like this, and we know that it's 600 feet tall, so we can go ahead and say that the building here is 600 feet tall, so 600 feet. We've got somebody up here who's dropping a coin off the top of the building, like this, so here's our coin. Remember, with vertical motion, we're always interested in three pieces of information at the key times during the flight of the object. So we're interested in y, the position, we're interested in v, the velocity, and we're interested in t, the time. So we want to know these things when the coin first gets dropped off the roof of the building. We also want to know those things for the point at which the coin hits the ground, so y, v, and t. So we can fill a lot of these things in already. We know that the initial height, the initial position, is 600 feet. We also know that the initial velocity is negative 8. And we always call the initial time t equals 0 because that's when the flight of the coin or the ball or whatever first begins. So at time 0, velocity is negative 8. Position is positive 600 because we're 600 feet off the ground. Down here, when the coin hits the ground, we know that position is zero, because now the coin is lying on the ground. It has no height to it, so y is going to be equal to zero. We don't know the time or the velocity. Those are, in fact, the two things we've been asked for, right? The question said, when does it hit the ground? That's the time here. And what is its velocity at that point? So those are the two things that we need to find out. The way that we're going to do that is by using this position function we just found. We know that at this point, y is equal to 0. So if we plug 0 in for y and we say 0 equals 16t squared plus 8t minus 600, we can solve this for t to get time t here. Now, as it turns out, we're not going to be able to factor the right-hand side easily. So let's go ahead and complete the square in order to solve for the roots or the values of t that make this equation true. Remember, to use completing the square, we have to get the coefficient on t squared to be equal to 1, which means we're going to need to divide everything through by 16. So 0 divided by 16 is still 0. Here, 16 divided by 16 gives us 1, which just leaves us with t squared. 8 over 16, we get 1 half, so plus 1 half t. And 600 divided by 16 is going to reduce to 75 over 2. 
So now what we want to do for completing the square, we want to take the coefficient on the t term here on the first degree variable, so that's 1 half. We want to divide 1 half by 2. So we divide this by 2, the result is 1 fourth. Then we take that result and we square it, and the result there is 1 over 16. So 1 over 16 is the value we need to add in to make this a perfect square. So what we get is 0 is equal to t squared plus 1 half t, and here's where we want to add our 1 over 16. So we add our 1 over 16, but then because we added a 1 over 16, in order to keep the equation balanced, we need to subtract a 1 over 16, and we have our minus 75 over 2. But now this part in parentheses is a perfect square that we can factor. If we factor it, what we get is t plus 1 fourth quantity squared. We have a minus 1 over 16 and a minus 75 over 2. If we multiply this negative 75 over 2 by 8 over 8, we get 16 in the denominator and we get 600 in the numerator. So we have a minus 1 over 16 and a minus 600 over 16, which is going to give us a minus 601 over 16. Now we can add 601 over 16 to both sides and we get 601 over 16 is equal to quantity t plus 1 fourth squared. Now if we take the square root of both sides, on the right hand side over here we're going to get t plus 1 fourth. On the left hand side we're going to get positive or negative square root of 601 divided by, the square root of 16 is 4, so we get 4 here. Then if we subtract 1 fourth from both sides we're going to get t is equal to negative 1 fourth plus or minus square root of 601 over 4. Now we have two roots for t, or two values for t. We have negative 1 fourth plus square root of 601 over 4, and we have negative 1 fourth minus square root of 601 over 4. If we take the value where we subtract square root 601 over 4, we get a negative value for t, which we know we're not interested in because here we have t equals 0 at time t equals 0. At some point later on when the coin hits the ground, that's going to be at t equals 1 second or 2 seconds or 3 seconds, but obviously it's going to be a positive value for time. So this negative isn't going to work here. If we take the positive value, we get t is equal to, if we just leave it in this form, we're going to get negative 1 plus square root 601 all over 4. If we use our calculators to turn that into a decimal, what we see is that it's approximately equal to 5.88 if we round it. So just before we get to about 6 seconds, the coin is going to hit the ground. So we can say t is equal to 5.88 seconds. If we wanted to give it perfectly accurately, we would leave it as negative 1 plus square root 601 over 4. That's going to be the time when the coin hits the ground. Now if we want to find velocity at that same time, all we need to do is generate a function for velocity and plug in this value for t. Remember the velocity is the derivative of position. We already have the position function, so if we want to find velocity we can say that the derivative of the position function is going to be equal to the velocity function. Just take the derivative of this right hand side, 16t squared becomes 32t. 8t becomes 8, and the negative 600 becomes 0. So this is our velocity function, and now in order to find velocity at this time, we just plug this value for t into our velocity function, so we would really say velocity of negative 1 plus square root 601 all over 4 is going to be equal to 32 times negative 1 plus square root 601 over 4 plus 8. And what we would get is approximately 196.12, but we want to call it a negative value so that it indicates that the velocity is going down, the direction is going down as the coin falls toward the ground. So the velocity is negative 196.12, and we'll call that feet per second for the units for velocity. And that's how you use differentiation and the position function to find the time at which it hits the ground and the velocity at that point.